Welcome to the video lecture series on sociology. Today we'll be discussing two concepts from the chapter one, that is sociology and society, from the class 11 textbook that is introducing society. And these concepts are scope of sociology and the relationship of sociology with other social science disciplines. Sociology has a very close connection with many social science disciplines like economics, political science, history, anthropology, and psychology. So today we'll be discussing all these relationships in detail, but first let's get on to the scope of sociology. Now when we talk about scope of sociology, the scope of sociology is very wide. When we talk about sociology, we talk about you know number of issues and these issues could be individual issues, which includes the relationship between a student and a teacher, relationship between parents and their children, relationship between friends, and when we talk about national issues, it could be issues like unemployment and it could be issues like, you know, the impact of different policies on maybe, you know, the workers or health workers. And when we talk about the international issues, it could be like the impact of, you know, flexible labor laws on working class or impact of, you know, the incoming of foreign universities on the education system of one particular country. So when we talk about sociology, the scope is very wide. Difference in these disciplines it's very less and these boundaries are very very blurred now let's come on to the relationship of sociology with economics now let's understand what exactly is economics economics is the study of production distribution and exchange of goods and services and how economics is related to sociology this is a very important thing which we need to understand now when we talk about economics the objective of economic analysis is to formulate precise laws of economic behavior. This is what economics talks about. You know, it talks about the precise laws of economic behavior. Whereas when we talk about sociological approach, they look at this economic behavior and in the context of social norms, values, and interests. Now let's take an example. When we talk about advertising, we say that we'll spend this much of amount on advertising because we want this percentage of profit. But when we talk about sociological perspective into this, they look at advertising as, you know, the impact of advertising on, you know, the lifestyle, the impact of uh, advertising on, you know, how these people, they are trying to sell different images. This is how sociology study advertising phenomena. So this is the difference. And when we talk about economics, it deal with only those relationships which are economic in nature. And the sociology studies all kind of social relationships. Now, economic usually provides technical solution, but when we talk about sociology, on the contrary, it does not provide any technical solution, but it encourages question and critical perspective. And here the role of economic sociology comes in, because, you know, we have to question and we have to have the critical perspective on the various things. It's not only the technical solution of things, you know, how we have to achieve certain means or certain goals. So in sociology, actually, the sociologists, they question the desirability of that goal also. Now let's come on to sociology and political science. When we talk about political science, the political science, as we know that it's uh, the science of studying state. Now when we talk about the conventional politics, you know, the politics which was studied earlier, the focus of conventional politics was on two major things. One was the political theory. And the second one was on the administration. And in these, both these issues, you know, the political behavior was neglected. And this is what sociologists are interested in. And here, nowadays, you know, sociologists and political scientists, they have common interest. Because when we talk about elections, they want to study, you know, the elections, they want to study the voting pattern, they want to study the behavior of the electorate, they want to study, you know, what are the opinion polls, how the result of opinion polls affect the results of any election. So now when we talk about sociology and political science, there is a close connection between these two disciplines. The major difference between sociology and political science, sociology is devoted to the study of all aspects of society. Whereas when we talk about political science, it is restricted to the study of power as embodied in any formal organization. So they talk about power, they study power. Sociology stress the interrelationship between the sets of institutions, including government. 
but when we talk about political science it tends to turn attention towards the processes within the government these are the two major differences between sociology and political science now when we talk about political sociology the political sociology studies the behavior of the people the political behavior of the people how they behave you know in one particular political situation how they associate themselves with the different political parties and this is you know the study and the focus of study of political sociology now let's talk about the relationship of sociology and history now history is a subject that you have been reading and studying for quite some time but sociology is a new subject for you and you all know that history is the reconstruction of man's past is the record of the human past and you know historians are interested in what happened at a one particular time in the past and you know we gather this data and the historians gather this, this data from variety of you know sources they have number of records personal collection of people from museums so this is how they collect the data and they reconstruct the history but there is a difference between sociology and history so let's talk about you know what are the differences between sociology and history as a discipline when we talk about uh, history historians study the past but when we talk about sociologists they are more interested in the contemporary or the recent past when we talk about historians they delineate the actual events to establish how things actually happened and here we are talking about the conventional historians nowadays when we talk about history this doesn't happen anymore but it has happened in the past when you know one particular event was delineated and we used to talk about that event and we used to explain that event but in sociology the focus was to seek to establish the causal relationship if something was happening at one point of time so what was the relationship what was the cause and effect relationship between those particular events this is what sociologists do when we talk about history it studies the concrete detail you know what happened when it happened where it happened who all were involved in that but when we talk about sociologists they more likely to abstract from those concrete reality they categorize and then they generalize and here you know the role of social history comes you know wherein we talk about you know what exactly went into the society at one point of time but when we talk about sociologist but they are more concentrated to the contemporary or the recent past rather than you know the long time back uh, study of certain phenomena now let's come on to sociology and psychology psychology as we know that it's a science of behavior it involves itself primarily with the individual and the social psychology which serves as a bridge between psychology and sociology maintains a primary interest in the individual but concerns itself with you know how that particular individual is behaving in a society in a collective manner with other individual this is what you know psychology not studies but the sociology studies this particular aspect now let's talk about the difference between the sociology and psychology when we talk about a sociology it studies the society and the social groups when we talk about a psychology it studies the behavior of individual in the society so the, this is the major difference between sociology and the psychology sociology studies society from the sociological point of view but when it comes to psychology they study any individual their behavior from the psychological point of view so this is the major differences but yes when we talk about sociology they talks about an individual but his relationship with others in the society now coming on to sociology and anthropology anthropology is actually the word is made up of two uh, greek words anthropos means a man and the logos means study so it's a study of man's behavior and the way man behave in a society and his work and this is what uh, you know the scope of anthropology is now when we talk about sociology and social anthropology and when we talk about anthropology there are number of sub disciplines of anthropology there is a physical anthropology which talks about you know the physical characteristics of you know the different people and they say that large amount of information can be gathered by the physical characteristics of the people and you know a different race and human beings then there is a cultural anthropology which talks about you know the culture material or non material culture of the past so what are the differences between the sociology and social anthropology and here i would like to tell you that many sociologists said 
that when we talk about sociology and social anthropology, these two are almost the same. And these are also termed as a, you know, twin sisters. Now, little bit of differences are there. So let's find out what those differences are. Sociology is the study of modern, civilized and complex society. Whereas when we talk about anthropology, it concerns with an uncivilized or primitive and non-literate societies. When we talk about sociologists, they study small as well as large group. But when we talk about anthropology, they study primarily a very small group. And sociology makes use of observation, interviews, social survey, questionnaires, and other methods and techniques to understand a one particular phenomena. But when we talk about anthropologists, they usually go to a one particular place, that primitive place. They stay with those pre-literate people and then, you know, they conduct their study. Now, uh, th we've just discussed, you know, what is the relationship of, you know, these different uh, disciplines with sociology. We talked about, you know, sociology and economics. We talked about sociology and political science. We talked about sociology and history. We talked about sociology and anthropology and sociology and psychology. And from these relationships emerged various disciplines, like we talked about economic sociology, we talked about cultural sociology, we talked about social anthropology. These are the sub-disciplines which emerged because there is a close connection between all these disciplines. Now, uh, we have just learned about it and uh, there are a number of resources, there are a number of books from which you can uh, learn more about, you know, all th these things. There is one uh, book by, uh, which is called Principles of Economic Sociology. Uh, the book is written by uh, Richard and you can go through that particular book if you want to know more about the economic sociology. And there's another book which is written by P. Sainath. He is a journalist. And the name of the book is, you know, Everyone Loves a Good Drought. Now, this book has the collection of various articles. And this actually talks about, you know, how, you know, the different disciplines are related to each other. You know, how the something which is happening in on political front is, you know, affecting the psychology of a people. And it is affecting, you know, the, the, the condition of the rural people. So it has collection of articles. and this is a very interesting material uh, if you would like to read that. Now when we talk about sociology as we uh, said in the earlier lectures also you know the reading from the different uh, textbooks and reading from the uh, books I mean it definitely helps you to broaden your horizon and to understand the society and how people are behaving in the society but uh, it is very important for you to observe things observe things with the critical perspective it's not like accepting things the way it is but always questioning it why that particular thing is happening the way it is happening and observe and share these findings and these observations with us. Uh, we have created a Google group for you. You can post in your observation. You can post in your, if you feel that you've conducted a small little study, you want to share those findings with us, you can do that. So as a sociologist and as a budding sociologist, we expect from you to keep observing and keep sharing. That's all for now. And in next lecture, we'll be discussing more about, you know, the various terms which are there in sociology. Thank you.